Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another video. It is Friday morning the 26th of July and we're sticking with the J Slater case today and I found something really, really interesting. I've got a way to look down the bottom of the ravine where J Slater's body was found and it's amazing, amazing detail. I can't believe I've not done this before. So stay tuned for that. I also want to address some comments that a lot of people had the same comments from uh, yesterday's video. So without further ado, let's go. This is Google Earth. This is the scene that if you've been following the case for any length of time, you'll be familiar with this um, terrain now. So this is uh, the Airbnb where Jay set off from, right? This area is where his phone last pinged. I've put it on the path, but Christopher Tenerife kind of put it somewhat off the path. And we know that that's not a phone ping from a phone mast. That's a GPS location. So that's going to be accurate within about 10 meters. So that needs to move just a little bit up there. But it's in that general area anyway. This is the Barranco Juan Lopez Trail. It appears that Jay must have come off the road maybe a little bit before the start of the trail and then worked his way down. That's what we've assumed that he's done and he's um, fallen multiple broken bones somewhere in this ravine. Now we do have some quite specific information as to where exactly his body was found. Now, yesterday I discussed the Dutch search team who said that their dogs located the spot where Jay's body had been. And I'll come on to that in a moment because I think a lot of people misunderstood what I was saying yesterday. The map that the media have put out, this uh, is from The Sun. They've put Jay doing a precarious ridge walk from the Mirador de Hilda up this ridge and then all the way down here and then falling somewhere as the ravine becomes very deep. Now look at this, if we go to the mirror door and look at this, just how uh, precarious this ridge is. The media are gonna have us believe, I mean look, he could have done, it's mental, why would he do this? And I don't think he did, let's just be clear, I, I don't think he did this. But he's going to go up here, instead of just going down the road, he's going to go up here and then he's going to walk along the top of this ridge and just keep walking along the top of his ridge and then eventually falls off. Well, there's a couple of reasons why I don't believe he took that route. He's phone ping a GPS location, so within 10 metres. So this is the ridge at the mirror door, right up here. This is the ridge at the mirror door. The phone ping's down here, more like there, but definitely not up on this ridge, okay? And then Jay's friend Brad, when he was video chatting with Jay, said that Jay was walking along a path with loose stones and he'd like, was going down. So if he's on this ridge, he's not going down a path, is he? He's walking on a very precarious, like a tightrope. I mean, you've got to be pretty skilled to do ridge walking. In areas, this ridge isn't too bad. Is it possible he did this? Yeah, it's possible he did this, but it's not consistent with what we've been told. So there's that. So I'm going to continue to put Jay's last walk as going down. It's the path of least resistance to get towards the course. He started off following Apple Maps which takes you a really ridiculous route, first north and then it takes you back south to go to Los Cristianos instead of just going south to start with. It's crazy, the walking route that Apple Maps gives. So I think Jay has started following Apple Maps, realised he's going in the wrong direction, that Apple Maps is taking him in the wrong direction. So he veers off, doesn't want to go back to the Airbnb for whatever reason, maybe he is scared, maybe he isn't, but he's trying to get down to the coast which is uh, just here. It doesn't look very far, but it's arduous. We can measure it actually. Now this is not a precise measure. Let's do it in miles. So from Jay's last phone ping 
all the way down to the Juan Lopez beach, you're looking at nearly two miles. I mean, that's just as, as the crow flies, but obviously if you actually went down the Juan Lopez trail, it meanders somewhat. So I think it's more like closer to two and a half miles. Jay wouldn't have known this trail and there's many people it's not true. Uh, some people are saying that you, there's no way you can get down to the uh, sea this way. You absolutely can. A lot of the footage that I've been showing in my videos are clips from people who are walking on that trail. There's reviews from like sites like TripAdvisor that I've read out on my channel of people who've walked the Juan Lopez Trail. And it's fine down to here apart from you know you get prickled by cactuses and stuff and that's another thing jay said he'd, he'd cut his leg on a cactus so you're much less likely to cut your leg on a cactus going along this ridge walk where it's just very rocky so he was going down this map from the media is wrong he was going down for sure in my opinion anyway and then when he gets to the ravine from footage that people like christopher tenerife has done you see the V notch, which is this kind of opening between this set of rocky outcrop and this set of rocks. I think Jay fell somewhere here. Anyway, look at what I found. If I change the um, setting here from current to 2017, Look how detailed this is. The amount of detail here is just incredible. So we can follow this path down and look exactly at the ravine floor. Can't believe that I've not done this before. So easy to, to see. All right, so foam pink from here. All right, so he's come down here. All right, following the trail. And then you get to the V notch, which is here. Right. Turn it around this way. So it, you can see what it looks like. V notch. Uh, and then if we zoom in, you can see the trail right down the bottom. Look, look how clear this is. Look how clear this is. You can see where the trail actually is. And if you stick to the trail, yes, it's difficult, but people do this trail in like sports shoes, trainers. Look, look how clear that is. It, it's really steep going down to the sea. But again, if you stick to the trail, you don't need ropes if you stick to the trail. Um, people use those long poles, but look how clear that is. So you're following it to here. I think I've even gone off the trail. <laughs> there it is. So even following it on a map, it's difficult to keep to the exact trail. And then you've got these big rocks and look how steep it is, but it's walkable down to the beach. Now, some hikers actually get a boat to here and then walk up. The Dutch search team has told the media or Jay's body was found about 300 yards into the ravine. So the ravine kind of starts going down. I assume the ravine is going to kind of start about here, like at the V-notch. It's fairly open until there. We can measure and we can do yards. And we're going to start, let's say, at the V-notch somewhere here and then do 300 yards and again this is just as the crow flies so 300 yards takes you to this rock this big rock just past this big rock just very approximate big rocky outcrop so i said based on the pictures that 
the Guardia Seville cut out. And no, they are not old photos. I've no idea how people come up with this absolute junk. They're absolutely not old photos. This is this is new photos. So you've got behind here you've got the V notch, and then you've got this rock that sticks out. And look at the ravine floor, like it's it's green, like at least for some of the wear. So I believe Jay fell around here, and that's about three hundred yards. But how did he fall? Like what had he done? So. I'm saying that he didn't do a ridge walk all the way from the mirror door. So how did he end up falling, like from a height? Yes, you can fall on the trail, but you know you you probably wouldn't die. You you might hurt yourself. You might break a break your ankle or something, break your wrist or whatever. But you're not going to die if you stick to the trail. Now obviously Jay doesn't know the trail, but what had he done? Had he got to here, and then thought? Oh, that looks steep going down and scary and impassable down there. So I'm going to walk up here, which doesn't look that bad from here. He gets to here and he's like, shit, how do I get out of there? And that just like, looks like a sheer rock face. So as he fallen at that point, as he tried to come down this, I think possibly... He's tried to come down this and he's fallen and he's ended up right down at the bottom of this trail. So that seems like the most likely scenario to me. Let me know what you think. Now, let me address some of the issues that came up from yesterday's video regarding the search dogs. So the Dutch search team, Signe Zorkhonden, said in their Facebook post that... One of their dogs tracked Jay's scent, Jay's tracks, right from the Airbnb. No, this is the issue. If a dog is trailing Jay using his scent, using his tracks, that dog is a live scent tracker. Not a cadaver dog who's sniffing out dead bodies. That's something completely different, and I've got numerous videos on this. There's no way a dog can live scent track someone's scent after 29, 30 days. It doesn't happen. It's never happened. Scent on a road, artificial surfaces, hard surfaces, especially in an area where it's pretty windy, and we know it's windy when Down the Rapids and Christopher Tenerife have been videoing, it's windy. That scent is going to be blown all over the place. It's going to dissipate very, very quickly. It's not nothing to hang on to. So... No, that's wrong. A live scent tracker did not, I say again, and this is not slagging off this Dutch search team. I'm sure they do great work, but it's not true that a dog could track live scent after 30 days. And if they're saying that, then I want them to prove it. Cadaver dogs are different. Cadaver dogs sniff out the scent of death. When something dies, like a mouse even, Right? The stink is horrible once that decomp starts. There's chemicals, molecules that the body, as it's decomposing, gives off. Cadaverine, putrescine, there's a number of others. And dogs are trained to find that specific scent. Like you can train a dog to search for any specific scent. Like I've trained Cassie to search for my phone, or any phone. And she can find a phone even when it's hidden and even when she's got distractions like her ball she finds the phone she knows the command to find the phone because we don't think phones smell <laughs> of anything specific but dogs smell different all right so the scent of death they're trained to find it particularly as the body decomposes that smell gets stronger until all basically all the soft tissues have gone and the body's just like a husk just like leathery skin, hair, and bones. And then you don't have that characteristic smell anymore. There's no soft tissues to be breaking down. But dogs can sniff out dead bodies underground. They can alert to a location where a body has been because the decomp molecules soak into the earth. 
They can locate a site where a body has been weeks, even months in some cases, after that body has been removed. It depends on the, um, the environment. It depends how long that body's been there, and so on and so forth. I'm talking about live scent, live scent tracking, not cadaver dogs. So there's two different types of dogs that search for missing people. Live scent trackers and cadaver dogs don't get the two confused. The other thing a lot of people said, and I, I suspect someone's made a video that people have watched saying this, just because the Dutch team are saying that their dog tracked Jay's scent from the Airbnb doesn't mean to say that he'd only just died, that he'd only just done that walk. I'm saying the Dutch search team are wrong. Their dog didn't track Jay. I'm not saying that Jay only took that walk like a day ago or two days ago. I'm not saying that. There's no proof of that whatsoever. None. And if someone is going to take Jay's body or walk Jay up here, you know, keep him prisoner for a month and then walk him along here and then throw him off, well, good luck to him. They have to be pretty sure-footed. They have to be a mountain goat. Take someone up here and then throw them off. Okay, all right, maybe that didn't happen. I mean, look at the uh, elevation change here. So from the top of here, it's uh, 530 metres above sea level. Down the bottom of the ravine, right down there, 442. So 530, 442, and that's not even at the bottom. 435. So basically, it's fallen. If he's fallen off this, this ridge here, 100 metres, that's, that's terrifying. I mean, fallen off there, that's, that's terrifying. Look at that. I think mean, that's the spot. So they're just round here, or around there. But no, just because the Dutch search team say their dog tracked Jay's live scent doesn't mean to say Jay was alive all that time and then just did that final walk like a day before the team arrived. Because they'd already found Jay's body by then. <laughs> and they'd know from the autopsy whether he'd been dead for a month or whether he'd just been dead for a few days. So, no, these are just my opinions based on the facts we know. You're entitled to your opinion, but let's base it on the facts. Base it on the facts you know, and then work from there. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.